Okay, anything else? If not, I yield the floor to the real star of today, the spokesperson for the President of General Assembly, Monica Grayley. That's very kind. Thank you so much, uh, Farhan, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, here we are. Uh, as you may uh, have seen, I was there in the General Assembly Hall. And uh, so I will have only two notes for you uh, today, uh, but important ones, of course. So this morning, the General Assembly adopted draft resolution A slash ES 10 slash L30 slash Rev 1 during the 10th emergency special session. Agenda item five, illegal Israeli actions in occupied East Jerusalem and the rest of the occupied Palestinian territory. The text entitled Admission of New Members to the United Nations, introduced by the United Arab Emirates and co-sponsored by over 70 member states, obtained 143 votes in favor, nine against, and 25 abstentions. In his opening remarks before the vote, the President of the General Assembly, Mr. Dennis Francis, urged the parties to this conflict with the support of those with leverage to do their utmost to secure an agreement of ceasefire that will end the suffering and the bloodshed, free all hostages, protect innocent civilians, and ensure immediate unhindered access of humanitarian aid without conditions for all who are in dire need. The PJ remarks were followed by, the, by a speech by the permanent representative of the United Arab Emirates, His Excellency, Mr. Mohammed Abu Shahab, the Palestinian and the Israeli representatives, the Palestinian, of course, His Excellency, Mr. Riyad Mansour, and the Israeli permanent representative, His Excellency, Mr. Gilad Erdan. There are 120 speakers, as I was, I was walking in uh, to speak uh, on the list, to deliver remarks, I should say. The meeting will end today at 6 p.m. Some of them, as you know, have delivered their remarks already, and most possibly the meeting will continue on Monday. So last but not least, today the United Nations marks the International Day of Argania. The PJ issued a video message already on his YouTube channel celebrating the novelty on this ancient, ancient tree for a brighter future to also advance the sustainable development goals. The International Day of Argania was proclaimed by the General Assembly in 2021 at the initiative by the Kingdom of Morocco recognizing the important role of the Argan tree in achieving sustainable development. The Argon tree, endemic to Morocco, is a unique backbone to the ecosystem and also an important source of income. Here we are talking about the oil and derivatives and support for local communities. So this is everything we have for today. Uh, yes, so if you have uh, Amelie and then I have Javier. Amelie, go ahead. How are you? Thanks, Monica. Mm -hmm. uh, just a, a question, nothing to do with anything you said. Uh, <laughs> the, the, an, another topic I meant. Mm -hmm. um, about the draft resolution about commemoration of Srebrenica. Mm -hmm. uh, it was in the pipeline. Do you have any date for the session on that and the vote? Thank you for, for this question, because there are also colleagues from the region that have been um, asking the same question. Uh, the draft resolution uh, is uh, being circulated. Uh, the circulation has started already. And uh, you, may be, you may know that it was uh, drafted by uh, Germany and also Rwanda. Uh, but we do not have uh, a date set for this. But uh, of course, it will come. Yes, absolutely. Javier, how are you? Hi, Monica. Um, mm -hmm. On the resolution again, uh, there is uh, the annex with new rights for the state of Palestine sure. to be implemented in the General Assembly. Mm -hmm. So what's next for the General Assembly? How are they, are you going to implement these new rights of, the, of this state? Yes, uh, as uh, in every or each resolution by the General Assembly, there is uh, 
uh, a time for implementation. As we heard from the other uh, spokesperson, the resolution will now be uh, uh, read uh, in its entirety. Uh, and of course, uh, it must be implemented. Is uh, the voice of uh, the membership, as we just said, 143 uh, member states voted in favor. And it's clear here what the resolution states and what the resolution expects. Uh, you also uh, must have seen, because we shared the resolution with everybody, right, uh, that uh, this document uh, accordingly uh, recommends uh, that the Security Council reconsider the matter favorably in the light of this determination and of the advisory opinion of the International Court, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, everything that is here is now uh, the determination by the General Assembly, by the membership. Uh, it is what uh, has now to be, now has to be uh, followed uh, up and also, of course, implemented. You are absolutely right. Uh, well mm -hmm. State of Palestine is not anymore an um, observer state, no member state. It has a new status, hasn't it? No. According to the resolution, of course, I will leave the interpretation for uh, the uh, competent uh, bodies and uh, actors. But according to the resolution, uh, the name of the, the, uh, the state uh, continues to be the same that we have uh, so far. But of course, this is everything to be uh, followed up by the competent bodies, and I'm no uh, competent body in this equation. So, anyone else here? Yes, how are you, Mike? Good I'm to great, see Monica. You. How about you? I'm fine, thank you. Go Good. ahead. Uh, four of the nine states who voted no on today's resolution actually support a Palestinian state. Sure. They've come out in recognition. That doesn't even include the states that abstained, that mm -hmm. otherwise support a Palestinian state. That indicates they have an issue with the process the way this was done. Mm -hmm. I know you can't speak for those individual states, no. but speaking for the, the president, mm -hmm. how much of a concern was this very unique process that was followed in this resolution that doesn't seem to apply anywhere else? Well, the, the concern of the president and also his focus uh, in, his, in this entire process is that uh, everything was done properly. This is a president that uh, really pays attention to rule of procedures, to order, and uh, to things done in a proper manner. And uh, that was uh, his uh, uh, focus in this, uh, um, when you ask me about his uh, concern or focus, that was his absolute focus on this, on this process. And uh, from his uh, speech also this morning, you may um, uh, understand uh, what was uh, uh, his, uh, what he stressed and uh, he wanted to see um, happening. Now we have a resolution, as we have other resolutions in this house, and um, the, the letter, the power of the letter is there, and I don't have anything else to, to comment on this. Yes, go ahead. Hello. I'm gonna have to say hello. Yes, I know you, but I don't know your name. My yes, ignorance. No, no problem. Mercedes Gallego with El Correo. Spanish Mercedes, go ahead. El Correo. Uh, I just wa wanted to clarify. Sure. Uh, there is no precedent for what we have seen today, as I believe. This is the first time that we have this intermediate solution. And you said that the competent body will have to... Oh, bodies. Yes. Uh, oh, bodies. Mm -hmm. And I would like to know, what are the competent bodies? What is the process now? Sure, sure. You have a, you have a resolution that has just been adopted now. Um, there are... Uh, uh, in this house, uh, there is in the house a process that, of course, uh, looks at the resolution. The resolution gets translated into several uh, um, in the official languages, of course. Um, and uh, the, the request that is made here in the resolution, and I hope everybody has that, right? Mine is, of course, all written, but I hope everyone has a copy, right? Uh, if you don't, just come see me. We can send you a copy. It is also in the, in the UN journal as well. Um, okay, so what happens here is that based on the requests and what the resolutions uh, decides or recommends or advise, um, every part here that is spoken to will produce uh, their uh, outcome, I would say. And uh, this is why I said I'm no competent, competent part in this, so uh, I don't... Uh, uh, you know, the president of the General Assembly was there as a convener, as a facilitator. The meeting is still being held, by the way. We still have, have uh, uh, 
uh, names names on the on the speakers list to deliver their remarks, names to deliver their remarks, interlocutors, and uh, we'll probably see the end of this uh, on um, on Monday. Yeah, we'll have more for you. Mike, go ahead. I'm trying to clarify procedure here because it's sure. real deep in, into the weeds. Mm -hmm. According to the, the annex on the resolution, the, the Palestinians are not eligible for, to float their candidacy in major UN organs like the Security Council, like the Economic and Social Council. Mm -hmm. The UN Charter created those bodies, but the, the General Assembly, from my understanding, is the body that created the Human Rights Council. Can, is, is it possible for the, the General Assembly to create an opening for the Palestinians to join the Human Rights Council? by another resolution, or that's out of play as well? You are, you are spot on when you say about the annex. And by the way, I would also encourage you guys to, or you, my colleagues, <laughs> to read uh, the annex, to read the entire document. Uh, of course, if we're going to write about it, we have to read uh, word by word. Uh, when it comes to, uh, you, say you, you mentioned the Human Rights Council. This is an election, Mike. This is an election. And of course, this is a decision by member states. So uh, we, we are not uh, that far here from what I see in this, uh, in this document. But it, theoretically, it, it could, it's not disallowed by this resolution passed today. I don't know. That's something I really can't uh, answer you. OK. So thank you very much. And I will see you on Monday. We'll be here on Monday. Have a good weekend, everybody.